In this video, I'm going to be plumbing a bathroom. And if you're new to this channel, my name's Josh. This channel's all about building your own house, saving a ton of money. So be sure to subscribe, ring that bell so you get a notification every time I release a new video, and hammer that like button for me. That's all I ask in return for making this video. So what I did here to make the learning process simple, I drew a little diagram of this bathroom we're going to be plumbing. So when we get in the bathroom and start drilling holes, you know exactly what I'm doing. So this is the most common size bathroom there is. It's a five by eight. That's the most standard size because most showers and shower tub combos come in five foot widths. And that's from edge of the two by four wall to the other two by four wall without drywall on. So it's a true five foot wide by eight foot measurement. Something you need to know for rough end measurements is a toilet needs to be 12 and a half inch to the center of the flange off a two by four stud wall. Um, or if you're using two by six, that's just as long as it's off the wall that does not have drywall on it. Now, if there's drywall already installed, you're gonna to have to make sure you come off the wall 12 inches instead of 12 and a half. And that's gonna to be to the center. And you need to make sure from edge of a shower or lavatory, it can't be any closer than 15 inches in my location. So you need to make sure you're spaced properly away from walls lavatories, any other fixtures like that. So this is gonna be where the lavatory is going. It's 24 inches. So that gives us plenty 15 inches from shower to shower or from lavatory to shower. And this drain is gonna actually be inside of the two by four wall. So we're gonna be drilling inside the two by four wall and it's gonna go directly in the center of where that sink's gonna go. So we're gonna be coming off this wall 12 and a half inches as well. And that's because we're gonna to have to allow for some drywall and a little bit of lip for the actual sink itself. So we're gonna come over 12 and a half inches, drill that in the center, and we're gonna put eight inch apart for the hot and cold. So it's gonna be four inches from the center of the drain to the hot on the left and cold on the right. So the hot's always on the left, cold's always on the right. And we're gonna be putting the uh, pressure lines coming in for the shower over here. Now the toilet, what you need to do, if that's the center of the toilet right here, you need to come over six inches to the center of the pressure line coming up, which is the cold water. It's gonna supply the toilet with the water and then it has to be six inches off the floor. So you need to keep those measurements in mind, but we're gonna be going over all this stuff while we're doing the work too. But um, and, and something else I wanna point out, this is a 34 inch shower in this case. So that, like I said, gives us plenty of room between. And we're gonna have our door coming in over here on the right side of the bathroom. And then this gives us plenty of room in here to move around to be taking showers or whatever you need to do. So let's go ahead and get started because we got a lot to do, guys. Before I go in here and start drilling holes, what I did here is I went ahead and dry fit the shower base in so we know where it's gonna be so I can drill the hole out accurately. And then right here's where the toilet's gonna to be going and right where the drill setting's about where I'm gonna be drilling the hole. And then right here's where our 24 inch lavatory's going. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the toilet hole first. So all you gotta do is take a framing square. I went ahead and measured over right where the center of the toilet's gonna be. So I'm actually about a little over 15 inches to where the toilet's gonna to be from this shower base. So all I gotta do now is take my framing square, lay it right up against the wall and that's gonna bring us out square, which is very important to keep your measurements accurate. And then I'm gonna go ahead and mark the edge of the square to go ahead and mark that piece and right where the 12 and a half inch measurement was. And always double check because you wanna measure twice and drill the hole once because you don't want a bunch of holes you got patched from being not accurate. So that looks good there. So now what I got here this is a four and a half inch drill bit. And uh, these are kind of pricey. I can't remember, I think I've paid about 50 bucks for it. So you're gonna be uh, needing it to put your toilet flanges in. So you're gonna have to bite the bullet and bite. But all we gotta do is put our drill bit right in the center of that hole and then go ahead and drill it out. All right, so now we got the toilet hole cut out. This is gonna be we're going to be using a three inch closet flange that goes right in there. And now let's go ahead and drill out the other holes before we put anything down. Now I'm going to be drilling the hole for the sink. And this is a two and one eighth inch hole saw. And to, in order to put this in, I went ahead and came over 12 and a half inches for this 24 inch sink from the edge of the wall. 
and that's going to give me my measurement and then I'm just going to go center of the two by four wall and that's going to be exactly where it's going to be placed. So now let's go ahead and get that drilled out and just go ahead and put this right in the center of that mark and go ahead and drill it out. So I'm through the plate of the two by four wall and if you've never used a hole saw before, there's something you need to know. You gotta take a nail or something to get the piece of wood out of the center. <laughs> so however you find it easiest, but there's little holes in the back side of the hole saw you can push a nail through most of the time. So it depends on the brand and then after you get so far, you can usually pry inside these um, bits to get it out. So there we go. Now I got finished the hole by drilling through the subfloor. And just so you know, this hole is for an inch and a half pipe. That's what I'm going to be using for the drain. Inch and a half is the most common sink drain. So that's what I'm going to be doing and check with your local building codes before you decide what you're going to use. So here's the back side of the shower pan I'm going to be installing. And this is the same four and a half inch uh, hole saw I used to drill out the toilet. So as you can see here, that's a little bigger than the actual hole we're going to need. And that's fine because the actual piece that goes in here to adapt the plumbing pipe is actually a little bigger than this hole anyways and has to go down into the floor. And it's still just about a quarter inch too big, but that's okay because I can see there's supports here this far out. So the hole could be clear out into here and it ain't gonna hurt anything structurally with this shower base. But check with your shower base to see if you can use a four and a half inch hole as well. And this is gonna require a two inch pipe just so you know while we're talking about it. And this shower base was sitting right over here in this bathroom. So let's go ahead and drill that out. So I found this measurement just by simply placing the shower base on the floor and then just tracing around the hole. So um, you can measure out from the shower base edge to get your measurements, but I also know it's directly center in between the wall to wall. So this was a pretty simple one. So let's go ahead and get this one drilled out. Boom. All right, to drill out for the water lines here, if this is where the drain is on your sink, just come over four inches to the left and right. And I put mine up through the floor because I found it to be easier that way. And then come over, you either come eight inch off that mark or four inches over off that center of the drain, whichever one you want to do. And then always come three inches. Um, let me say it again, three inches off the wall. And that's going to give us the center of the cold water here. And then come three inches off this side of the wall and then mark the center and that's for our hot water so three inches and three inches so hot and cold and i use a 5 h drill bit to drill out for half inch water lines this seems to be about right and after observing here it looks like we're on top of a floor joist right there so let me not drill that one out right now okay so whenever there's a floor joist like there is here these water lines don't have to be exactly one way or the other. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this over a little bit. Um, let's just go about right here. Um, actually, let's move it a little bit closer to right here. And you heard it rub against the floor joist right there. And as long as you're not in the way of that drain coming down, then that's fine. So just head offset a little bit because of that floor joist, because you don't want to have to move a floor joist and cut it out and head around it and all that. So now let's drill out for the shower water lines. Now we come 16 inches off from the wall to get the center of our shower base. And again, check your shower base because it may not be the center for you. And let's go ahead and mark the center and then come four inches to left and right. So one, two, three, four, right here. And then one, two, three, four, right here. And then take your speed square because these are gonna go in the center of the two by four wall, which gives me an inch and three quarter over. And right here is the center of this water line. And then come over here, an inch and three quarter. That's the center of this water line. And we're gonna go ahead and drill these out. Okay, we're gonna drill out for this toilet's water supply line. So we gotta come six inches over from where the center of the toilet flange is. So that's right here. 
And now this supply line gets put inside of the two by four wall. So just go ahead and measure over to the center of the two by four wall and drill that out. And that's gonna be our rough end supply line coming up. And now it's time to install this toilet flange. This is a three inch closet toilet flange. So this is for new construction primarily. So what I like to do is use this spacer first. And the reason why, when you put this spacer down first, once you put your flange on, it's gonna be about the same height as if it was sitting on top of your tile or whatever you're using as flooring. So this is just a piece of Advantech three quarter inch subfloor. You can use anything. I just cut it out of wood using a jigsaw. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take this piece of wood and I'm gonna center it about where it needs to be into that hole. And I'm just gonna fasten this down using just regular inch and a quarter dry or one inch drywall screws, just enough to tack it into place. And the reason why I do that is because once I put the screws through the toilet flange, it's what secures it ultimately. So these just need to hold it temporarily. So now I'm gonna take my toilet flange. And one thing I wanna show you is you don't wanna put these square with the wall. And the reason why, when you put your toilet in, there's gonna be little flay, little nuts that slide into this, and well, bolts, and then nuts go on top of it. And if it's squared like this, they're gonna line up here and it won't hold it. So more or less, you wanna put it on a diagonal. So don't install it like this to where these holes are square at the wall. You wanna turn it to where they're diagonal with the wall. Something like that, it doesn't have to be exact. So like I said, it, later you'll understand once you get to go installing your toilet. So I'm gonna put that about where it goes, measure off the edge of the wall, make sure I'm still perfectly at one foot and a half. Okay, and that looks good. And now I'm gonna switch over to my decking screws. And I use decking screws. Uh, you should get at least a uh, two inch decking screw. So these are plenty long, or actually probably a little too long, but they'll do just fine. So that looks about right. Um, so just hold that into place and anchor it using your decking screws. And now you don't want to over tighten this or it'll crack that plastic. So just snug it up, just don't tighten it up. And now just put your decking screws into each one of those flange holders or each one of those screw holes, there's four of them in this case. So now that our toilet flange is sitting where it needs to be, we need to create a vent to vent this toilet. So I need to drill another hole here. And I'm gonna show you underneath, cause this is gonna come out and elbow over, and then there's gonna be a vent that comes up through this wall here. So we're just gonna come back and center with this toilet and drill an inch and a half hole in the center of this wall. So now we got all of our rough holes that are going to go through the floor in 100%. And now I'm going to go underneath and hook all this together. Oh, and another thing, if you notice, this has a sealed piece of plastic over the actual hole. It's so when you do your pressure test, it's already sealed. Or if you do your water test, either one. And then after you're done testing, you just take a hammer and smash that center out. And it actually just goes down the drain and out through the septic or uh, public sewer system. Now we're gonna install the drain for the sink. And in order to do that, you need a inch and a half T. So we wanna come up off the unfinished floor, 18 and a half inches. And that's where we are going to want the center of the drain. So go ahead and measure up, hold it about where it's gonna be. And if you're off just eighth inch or so, it ain't gonna be a big deal. So that looks pretty good right there. So now, what you want to do is mark up to where the pipe's going to be hitting inside of the pipe. So you don't want to measure to the, or mark at the bottom of the T, you want to mark up into where it's going to be. So go ahead and eyeball that, make a very visible mark. And what I like to use is this is just one of those multi-tools that have a head attachment and makes it into a little sawzall, but any regular sawzall will be fine. So go ahead and just cut right where that mark is. And I like to use a metal blade 
because I feel like it cuts it a little better and a little less uh, rigid. So after you cut that off, you're gonna have burrs on the edges and on the inside of the pipe. So just take a utility knife and scrape those off because if you don't scrape them off, it won't give you a good seal when you glue it because the little frays and burrs on the side can get into the joint. And on the inside of the pipe, you wanna take them off because hair can get stuck on the burrs and cause a clog in your drain. So you don't want that either. Now we're going to install the T. So the first thing you gotta do is use what's called primer. And you can get this at any building supply store. It's very common. And you're gonna to want to prime the inside and the edge of this plumbing pipe in order to have a secure joint. And you got to do that by code when you're working with PVC. So I'll go ahead and hit this T first. And don't worry about if you get this stuff on the wood, it ain't gonna hurt anything. And then around the top. All right. And as you can see, sometimes you make oopsies and get on the plumbing fitting, which is no big deal. All right, and you wanna let that dry for just a few seconds or so. And now what I like to do is I go ahead and dry fit it before I glue it. And in order to get this square without guessing off the wall, is I'll just put in a dummy piece of pipe, which isn't gonna be functional. So I'll go ahead and just slide that into the fitting. And then what I do is take a framing square, come off the stud of the wall, make sure we're lined up square there. It looks pretty good right there. So now what I like to do is just take a pencil and mark on the fitting, okay, and the plumbing pipe a mark so they line up together. So when we glue it, we know we are square. So go ahead and take all that back off. All right, and always make sure your fitting is draining the right way when you install it. You don't install it like this. Now, if it was a vent pipe up above, that's how you would, but anything below, you wanna install to where it drains down. Now you wanna get what's called PVC cement. And this stuff is for any PVC pipe. So that's what you're gonna use for the glue. All right, first we go ahead and put it on the inside of the pipe and then around the edge of the pipe. Okay. And then you wanna make sure you get a good quarter inch turn on this. And I'm just gonna put this pipe back on for reference. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna hold it square. And that looks pretty good. Now you wanna hold that pipe into place for a moment until that cement sits up. And then we can pop that off. And then there is our drain for our sink. And now we gotta continue the venting up. Now we're gonna go ahead and finish the vent pipe here. And I just put our cement on. And this is gonna run up to the roof and eventually exit the house. And don't forget the quarter inch turn or sorry, quarter turn your pipe so it gets a good seal. Hold it for just a moment. Okay, and as for the venting, I got it all put together. So here goes the vent up for the sink. And then this is that toilet vent. And as you can see, they both tie together up here. So the sink just went right to the toilet vent. And then that came out to this one pipe. And this one pipe is running this way and it catches the laundry room here for the washing machine and then it connects to my main stack right here. And then this main stack is gonna keep on going up and collect a couple more pipes at a time, setting up from the master bath and exit right through the top of the roof. And that's how you vent your bathroom. So as far as pressure lines go, each one of those holes I drilled up through the floor, your pressure lines are gonna come through there. Like I said, just make sure the hot's on the left, cold's on the right. And the shower is going to get a mixer, and I'm going to make a video on how to hook up all that too in the future. So be sure to subscribe if you want to catch that video. All right, guys, I'm here inside of the house I live in now. I built this house about four or five years ago. This bathroom is laid out really similar to the house that I just showed you how to rough plumb. But as far as the final connections go, uh, let's go over to the 24 inch sink and go underneath. As you can see here, we have our inch and a quarter tailpipe coming down out of our sink. And all you gotta do is pick up these P-trap uh, kits. You can get them in Lowe's or Home Depot. This is an inch and a quarter P-trap. And then it goes to your inch and a half pipe back here. And this piece you see here that it's slid into, you just gotta buy, it's called a Marvel adapter. 
it converts your inch and a half pipe over to the inch and a quarter and it just connected with this um, plastic sleeve they just slot it right into and then down here for your pressure lines you just got to get these quarter turn um, adapters that slide on top of your pressure lines and then these connect to your water lines that hook up into your faucet this is your supply line going to your toilet this is just your quarter turn 3 8 inch supply line going up to it and as you can see here it's just a right angled quarter turn shutoff valve pretty straightforward and this is what it's going to look like for your final connection for your shower if you have a shower base you just simply set the shower base over that PVC pipe and the drain is going to look something like that and again I'll have to show you in a later video how that connects exactly I just want to show you what it looked like towards the end of your project. All right guys, that's all I got for you. Be sure to subscribe like I said, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.